How long did it take for you to find your intervention funny? Oh, that's a good question. I didn't find it funny on the night. We don't need roads. Uh, Mr. Mulaney, I am genuinely a massive, massive fan. This is a huge honor for me. So thank you for taking the time, man. I appreciate you. Thanks, Jake. I appreciate it. Of course. Uh, I'm going to jump into this. Uh, there is that that old expression that I've always heard is that comedy is tragedy plus time. Obviously, you have some incredibly funny stories about dark moments in your life. But I am curious about one specifically. How long did it take for you to find your intervention funny? Oh, that's a good question. I didn't find it funny on the night. Um, and I find most things in the moment very funny as they're happening. So uh, that really is the, to me, I, I look back, I go, that is the power of uh, how strong drugs are, that I was just so mad and sad. Um, when did I start to find it funny? Uh, uh about a week in, um, I talked to some friends on the phone who had been there and they reminded me of things I said. And I was uh, it was I was still needed a lot of help at that point, but it was a little bit off to the races in terms of laughing at it. You know, you mentioned the fact that you do often find moments funny like that. So I kind of am curious, what is a, a moment like in your life when you realize oh, this is a thing that I'm going to work into a show, whether it's the time you accidentally got a prostate exam or the moment that you did not want a Best Buy rewards card. Like how quickly do you realize like, oh, this is something I can do something with? So too often. So the, the biggest learning curve is that I think most things are very, I find a lot of things very funny. And then an audience will go, that's not that, that's not a keeper, you know? So I, I think the learning curve is more that I, um, try too many things and over you know early in small clubs and work that out but there's a lot of things that as they're happening i'm quite delighted with myself <laughs> and i have to tell you some of my favorite moments from your stand-ups are when you tell stories about other people i love your bill clinton story uh detective bittenbinder ice tea your dad ordering one small black coffee at mcdonald's yeah of all of those people what is the best reaction you've ever gotten from someone that you have talked about in one of your standups? Oh, um, I would say hands down, the late JJ Bittenbinder. Um, he was uh, not thrilled with it, apparently. I think there was an article in the Sun Times about it, um, but he was not thrilled about it in a perfect JJ Bittenbinder way. And I think he said, he said, I never wore cowboy hats to the schools. So he's got that detail wrong, but he, ah, but he did note that he wore cowboy hats. So I still agree to disagree. He did wear his cowboy hat. However, I, I I appreciate that he didn't deny ever wearing cowboy hats. Secondly, I think he said he mixed it up good to get laughs. And uh, that, that is kind of the work of every comedian. I, I just love that, like, of everything in that entire story, it's the cowboy hats that really kind of yep. pissed him off. That it that's... was the it was the first as far as I remember, it was it was the first statement. I never wore cowboy hats to the schools. Uh, speaking of Detective Bittenbinder and, and obviously the city of Chicago, uh, there are so many things. I mean, I feel like you could do specifically a show just about Chicago for the people of Chicago, and we would love it. And everyone outside the city of Chicago would just go, I don't know what the hell he's talking about, because there's so many things specific to this city that really outside the city limits, people just don't get. So what do you think is the funniest thing about the city of Chicago that maybe you would never put in a stand-up special because only the people within this city limits would understand. The people in Chicago couldn't be more impressed by local government. Um, the amount of times I've heard someone go, and he was, and he was an alderman, you know, <laughs> about someone, or and they were comptroller, you know, or like uh, they were a Democratic selectman. He was a precinct captain. I'm like, these are okay, you know, good work, glad. It's nice that people give back. But man, oh man, um, I've seen I've I've met people with the smallest titles imaginable throwing their weight around like they were the king of France. Our daily soap opera is just whatever drama the aldermen's are up to, like like Ed Burke. It's also it's so fun because normally you know corruption happens at the top here, right at the bottom, right <laughs> in the middle. I mean, like you can be you can be a pre a Democratic precinct captain. 
um, in Lagrange, and <laughs> and you're indicted for crimes. <laughs> That's normally, you know, uh, brown paper bags of money under the bathroom door. But it's so fascinating. Like I know we, like, love, it, it, we love it. I think it, we just love the idea of um <laughs> both being on the take and also just we love that someone is, you know, a, a selectman. Exactly. Um, I, I'd love to talk really quickly about your time on SNL because you have written yeah. some of my favorite sketches in the history of the show. Herb Welch is one of my favorite SNL oh, characters of you. all time. Uh, just because I feel like yeah. working in news, I know 10,000 versions of that reporter. Yeah. Um, thinking back to all the amazing hosts that you worked with over your time, who was most different than you expected in the sense that your experience working with them on SNL changed your perception of the celebrity you thought they were? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I was really struck by, it's not that I, what I wasn't surprised that Dwayne Johnson worked really hard, but I was surprised that he had so much facility with comedy because this was still over 10 years ago. So, um, so much facility with comedy and worked so hard at every sketch. Um, it it wasn't so much that it was surprising to me. It just made me appreciate him a lot more. Was that uh, around the time of the Rock Obama? Yes. That, that was, was great. Fantastic. That was that fantastic. Was um, you now have so many uh, stand-up specials that span such a wide period of time that I feel like each one sort of represents a different period of your life, a different snapshot, a different moment, uh, a different set of circumstances. So I'm curious, for you, what is the experience like when you see clips of yourself and other specials? Do you see a different person when you watch New in Town or Comeback Kid or Kid Gorgeous? Oh, that's a fair question. Um, uh, I mean, it's definitely a fair question. I don't know why I said it that way. That's a fair <laughs> question. That's an interesting question. I um, uh, I found I find a lot of times in life when I look at myself doing stand up in any era, I go, "Oh, that guy's. I like that guy." You know. Um, I found for a long time that uh, I would look at myself on stage and go, boy, that guy has it all figured out. You know, uh, why can't I be like him? Which is a little egotistical, <laughs> but um, I'm at a great place in my life where there's much less of a difference between me off stage and on stage. Uh, hey, John, dude, they're giving me the rap. I genuinely am just such a massive fan of yours. Have thank, always thank been, you. and uh, and thank you not just for for everything that you've done, uh, but for everything for the city of Chicago. And I am so happy that uh, you, you and your family are happy and healthy, man. Oh, we're doing well. Thanks a lot, Jake. I All appreciate right. it. Really nice Take to care. meet. You. Nice to See meet you. you. Take care, guys. Well, we're going. We don't need roads.